Welcome to American Idol Unaired. I'm Bennett Shearer, and usually I'm talking to the singers that you didn't see on American Idol, but there are some other people who we don't see on the show that I want to get to know, the people behind the scenes. One of these people is Josh Randall, who is a casting producer for Idol. He's also the host before the host, and you'll learn what that means. Josh, he's in the Zoom room now. How's it going? What's up, Bennett? It's such a pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to talk to you, Josh. Now, you are here to talk to us about finding amazing talent because you are indeed a casting producer for American Idol, gearing up for its 21st season. Very exciting. But there is so much that you have done in your career that I want to give you the chance to talk about for a little bit. Oh, that's uncomfortable, Bennett. You're going to put me on the spot? Yes. Yeah, so, I so am. Prior to Idol, I was a an almost famous pop star. That was my dream. I was signed to Interscope Records. Uh, I did songs with Flo Rider, T-Pain, Akon. I was also in like a boy band. I was also on America's Got Talent at one point. So uh, I've I've kind of been through the been through the gamut. And that's kind of been I think my X factor as a casting producer, being a former artist, because I also relate and I feel like I speak the language of a singer, uh, and I also kind of you know have a better understanding of what TV looks for now. So I hope to be like a little bridge for singer and television and facilitate some opportunities for these kids. Absolutely. Now you. Uh... You, you have a lot of involvement in American Idol. So one thing I did mention, you are the the host before the host. And I want to get to that really quickly because can you explain what that means to the listeners who may not know exactly what we're talking about here? Okay. So like, you know, there's a running joke amongst the audience. They call me fake Ryan. So before uh, an hour before the show starts, uh, when you come to a live show at American Idol, you see me and I come on stage and I, I am your host and I entertain the crowd. And I try to do it in a very um, on-brand American Idol way where it's like, jokes about idol and trivia uh for american idol because it was it was our 20th season so there was so much history and and it was fun to do a lot of trivia i also sing songs at one point and talk to the audience it's a really fun time along with explaining the show so the warm-up post is you know essentially my job is to inform the audience what their job is because the live studio audience we, we want them to have a great time so i'm also kind of like the hype man for the show and i introduced ryan i introduced the judges so it's been an amazing experience it sounds like a blast and uh did you start doing warm-up before or after you joined the show as a casting producer so you know uh, in all honesty um for one of my dreams and goals is like you know i would love to become the next ryan secrets how does that happen and i kind of manifested and got my way into working for american idol so i started as a casting producer and uh i showed some interest uh in hosting and um, Megan Wolf, like our executive producer, knows that as well. And they started me off kind of doing the interviews last year on Instagram. So I was like the IG Live host for American Idol and uh, interviewing past contestants and getting to know their story and promoting the new season, which I'll be doing soon on their their page as well. And I got a call during Hollywood week uh, taping in December. It was like 6 a.m. And Megan Wolf was like, can you can you host tonight? Warm up host? And I didn't even know what that means. I don't even know what a warm-up host entails, so I just said, yeah, I'll be there. And I figured it out, and uh, here we are. And I got to host warm-up host all 20 live shows this year. It was it was awesome. Just if, if you want to uh, brag a little, I mean, who are some of the amazing people that you've found over the years on Idol? I'm a newer casting producer on the show. The first season, I was kind of like part-time. I was like a scout working under Peter Cohen. And then I started two seasons ago, and I cast Willie Spence, who was runner-up. Wow. Um, and then this season, uh, most notable, I cast Nicolina, who was mm. fifth place on the show. Um, but you know, uh, you know, we all, it's about six of us that cast the show and we all kind of collectively work together and root for each other. We always root for each other and the people we cast, but, um, at the end of the day, it's really not about us. It's about giving these young artists the opportunity. So it's about them, but I love mm-hmm. doing it. You know, over the years, things have changed with technology and we didn't have Instagram when the show started, but now in the matter of a minute, you can find somebody and you say, hey, DM me. Next thing you know, you may be finding the next winner of Vital. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing it right now. I'm sending random DMs. If you get a DM from me, it's the real deal. I'm, I'm interested in you and I'm interested in bringing you in and, you know, kind of giving you the rundown and coaching you on what it takes to be on the new season. You mentioned there's about six of you guys that actually find the talent. So what in particular is Josh Randall looking for? Because I know you probably have a specific ear when it comes to what, what you're looking for. We all kind of have like different brands of what we look for. Me personally, I'm always just kind of known for finding personalities and people that stand out, not necessarily vocally. Obviously, like you have to check a box being a good, great singer. This is American Idol. Um, but I'm always looking for kind of personality and, and little quirks and because I'm quirky and I have a lot of energy and feel like I'm fun. So I always try to bring people into the show that 
bring some sort of uh, X factor when it comes to personality. The goal has always been to have someone on the show or people on the show transcend from the show and become a successful recording artist. Uh, obviously, you know, the Kelly Clarkson's and Carrie Underwood's happened, in my opinion, because at the time, American Idol in itself was just this pop culture phenomenon. So um, that's why their success was just, you know, it was the only show on television like that. Now we have so many competing shows, but um, we still are the number one show. And, and the goal is always to find the next biggest artist. And I always describe Idol now. It went from the singing Olympics. You know, it was always the big belters that had success and those people that can do the vocal gymnastics to, you know, now it's kind of been, now it's become like who's the next biggest artist it's very like singer songwriter artist driven so those artists that might have been afraid like oh i'm not the biggest belter i mean you could possibly go top 10 on the show now because it's really about bringing authenticity and originality to the show that's what i think has been just fascinating and, and really interesting especially when they brought the show back on abc because going into its 21st season i mean every year you know the standard keeps going up and up and up and it's not just the vocal ability. It's about how can you present yourself as an artist. And Alejandro really raised the game in season 17. And then you see what happens next year. You got Julia Gargano. And then just every year after that, I mean, we, we're just seeing. It's like you never know what's going to come through those doors. Yeah. I mean, for everybody out there, if anyone's watching that's never auditioned, there's really nothing to lose. Um, it's very pro-artist friendly. I think in the, in the past, there was always like a taboo thing like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to give up my rights or this and it's a lot different now um what you're getting yourself into the show is very pro artist and we support singer songwriters and you can even audition with an original song where a couple of years ago a couple of seasons not a couple of seasons ago but in the past where you know you did an original song it was kind of like it was just not a good thing but now it's almost celebrated i know that we, we do see on these shows sometimes and it's like it can be a risk and oftentimes it's subjective whether or not an original song is good enough, you know, and, and sometimes people choose covers because they're safer. But I mean, do you prefer that an artist takes that risk and sends you an original song or, or do you, do you think it's all about what actually sounds good? I think it's so it's twofold. I mean, I think you always want to have a great cover in your pocket. And when I say doing a cover, it's like what cover is adjacent to you as an artist. So, you know, the, the cover needs to sound like, Hey, I would have wrote that song. That's the type of, you know, if, if I could have wrote any song, it would have been that one. So I always say like the cover you choose needs to feel adjacent to you. But if you got a solid original, I mean, I'd love to hear it because our executive producer, Megan, like I said, like she's always going to ask you that question um, before, you know, because I don't know if you've heard anything but beyond the curtain, but before you get to judges, it's an audition process. It, oh, yeah. it's, it's some rounds and some people you got to get past. And, and Megan Wolflick, who is our EP, is always going to ask you like, who are you as an artist? What kind of artist are you? It's been really fun learning, you know, uh, from these contestants who I've had the chance to talk to about that process because, as people know, there are usually several rounds going through producers, and then you get to Megan. And I've, I've mentioned on the show several times that Megan's kind of my idol because as somebody who wants to get into TV myself, I think it is amazing how she has sort of climbed her way to the top starting season two in the live shows. The, the way that she has worked her way up, it just it blows my mind, honestly. Yeah, she started as an associate producer for the show. She uh, she actually discovered William Hung. Fun fact. Wow. And then uh, worked her way up, and now she's our she's the showrunner. She's our fearless leader. I think she's transcended the show and developed it into. Uh, I, I think that the success of this past season obviously is because we had an amazing cast, but I think it also speaks for her um, and, and her leading the show now. Yeah, it, it really is exciting, and I also think that. You know, the fact that she's been there since the beginning, I mean, uh, closest thing was when they had Nigel Lithgow and Ken Warwick. They were there a long time ago, and then there was sort of a little break. But now having somebody who has been there almost as close to day one as possible with season two, I mean, being there with Ruben, you know, that's the closest to the original that you can get. Yeah, Ruben's a great guy. I actually got to interview him on the uh, IG Live for American Idol. So if you want to check that. that out, it's a real fun interview. I actually watched that today. I was laughing so hard. You you read him the list of, uh, of of possible names. They were. Do you want to tell the story about how they didn't know for sure if they could call him a velvet teddy bear? Oh, I was just I was kind of just pulling a joke over Ruben. I said like, "Hey, Ruben, you know, like when they were naming you the velvet teddy bear, they had some other name options." And he was like, "Really?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'd love to name you some of the name options." And I gave him like these ridiculous names, and he was like, "You're lying. Don't listen to this guy." It was really funny. Well, yeah. 
seeing all these contestants who even even back in the day in these earlier seasons that are still doing amazing things and 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 seeing them usher in the new talent this 20th season was really special because especially having those alumni come back like Ruben like Jordan and seeing how these contestants even in this day and age where you know they're getting into an industry that's so different from when Ruben and Jordan started out and yet having an amazing voice and an amazing story and personality those things never change I think no matter what day and age we live in. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're timeless artists we found. And, and I think we're on the road now. I think, you know, th this past season, we had some amazing artists from Nicolina to to Jay to Fritz to uh, our winner, Noah Thompson. Like, they're, they're doing some numbers and, and the proof is is in their success right now. So let me ask you a question. So you're like, are you like an American Idol enthusiast? Like, how did American Idol unaired start? Okay, so I... To say I'm an enthusiast would be an understatement. I actually, it, it's 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 honestly my dream. If I'm being extremely honest, my dream is probably to work for the show one day. But you know that that's just being very honest. And um, I was actually watching Leah Marlene on Instagram Live, and she was talking about an artist named Elliot Greer who was not aired. So I checked out his page, and I was like, this dude is just incredible. He'd be a great interview. I've been doing podcasting since I was about 13, kind of on and off. And I was just like, you know, you'd be cool to talk to. And I was like, we should do a whole show based around the unaired contestants. And then lo and behold, it's just been an honor that so many of them actually wanted to talk and, and chat about their experience. So it's been a wild ride. All right. Since you're an American Idol enthusiast, I'm going to put you to the test. It's our, we've had 20 seasons. We're going to 21. So uh, can I test your, your trivia with American Idol? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, true or false? Philip Phillips, a season 11 winner. His middle name is Philip. No, false. True. Yeah, yeah, you're you're correct. You're correct. It's false. It's yes. Landon. Um, how old was a uh, season five winner Taylor Hicks when he won? Twenty three. Do you do you know Taylor Hicks was the guy with black with salt and pepper hair? He was twenty eight, man. It was the way he was twenty three. I do a joke in the warm up show, I and I tell people, I'm like, how old was Taylor Hicks when he won season five? Was it twenty six, twenty eight, or fifty four? Yeah, I should have known um, the gray hair. I should have known. Okay, I'll give you one last one. So um, Carrie Underwood won season four. The runner-up behind Carrie Underwood um, was his name Bo Nice, Bo Rice, Bo Bice, or Bo Slice? Bo Bice. Correct, correct. All right, you got two of three. You passed the test. You are an Woo! American Idol enthusiast. Seen every episode, and I'm 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 pretty disappointed in myself about the Taylor Hicks one, but that's okay. You know, I uh, I did want to ask about um, you know, you, you mentioned just some of the artists that you have found recently, Nicolina and uh, and Willie, and what stuck out about them because they must have had something that just really caught your eye. I mean, you, you know, not just to speak for them. There's so many artists that you know we all cast, and they don't really get shown. So I'm passionate about all of them. I mean, Willie and Nicolina obviously were just amazing vocalists, and. Uh, I knew Willie through someone else because I'm from Florida and Willie originally used to live in West Palm Beach, um, close to where I grew up. And uh, we knew, you know, I just reached out and it, Willie was someone I, I tried to get the previous season and uh, just didn't work out. And it was a lot of calls and it, it was actually also hard to push Willie through um, on the show. Like uh, Megan was kind of on the fence and then I had to kind of, you know, revisit Willie and say, hey, this guy is probably one of the craziest focus I've ever seen. And um yeah, obviously he had a successful year, almost won the show, but, um, you know, all of, I can speak for it, all of the casting producers. We're, we're passionate about everybody. We get cast, not necessarily the ones that do the best on the show. And the one common theme that anyone I find is it's just talent and likability. And, you know, th they're all such nice people and, and, and you root for them because yeah. their success is your success and, and you feel for them. So even like, I didn't cast Liam Marlene, but what a great kid and happy for her success as well. Actually went to school with her for a bit, so that was fun to cheer her on. Oh, nice. As we head into season 21, I mean, uh, very exciting that Idol's turning 21. And, and you know, I, I guess, would you say that it, it's hard to really describe anything in particular that you're looking for? Because uh, how can you really tell before they really walk into the door or slide in your DMs? I mean, I would be, I, I would be misrepresenting myself if I had some formula like, oh, I know exactly. Yeah. You just know when you see you don't it. Know. Yeah. You know when you see it. I, I will say, you know, we started doing some, uh, some, some callbacks and some auditions today, and um, they're so good. Everyone's so good, and, and I think season twenty set the bar for how good the show can be again. And I think season twenty one will, will, will ex the the goal is to exceed it. it season twenty set the bar really high but already we've already seen so many amazing talents and I, I think the success of the show and the more 
artists are seeing the success of these artists, we're going to have even more singer songwriters and people that aren't afraid to be on a talent show again. Because I am an enthusiast and I just cannot hide my excitement about American Idol, the fact that it is turning 21 and you ask yourself, like, how long can the show go on? Every year you think to yourself, yeah, it's going to come back because it gets better and better and better. Something about the 20th anniversary really just, it, it just did it for everybody. There was a buzz in the air, like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, there was a buzz for 20. And, but I, I also think uh, marketing-wise, Idol, the fact that Idol, Idol's turning 21 and it's yeah. legal now. Yes. There's going to be some fun marketing towards season 21, I can tell you that. Oh, I cannot wait. Well, uh, you know, Josh, you must have such a fun time because between finding the talent and essentially being the talent, I mean, you know, you're you're well on your way to being the next Ryan Seacrest. So, like, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious as well. The fact that you get to look ahead to the next season, uh, but then also be there during the season to be on stage. How exciting is it to just be there and be a part of the environment, be a part of a live show? You, you know, it, it's such a buzz. I actually, my mom, my mom is a big American Idol fan and I flew her out from Florida to L.A. to watch a show and she was over the moon it's there's nothing like watching it live and and listen man um i don't know where, where do you live where are you from i'm from maryland you're from maryland all right when we go live i will get you a, a ticket if you want to fly out to la i'll get you a ticket to watch the show live oh, wow thank you <laughs> thank you yeah. wow i don't I have no words other than thank you wow um well season 21 coming up next year but you guys are in full swing. I just want to keep repeating it over and over and over again to get in touch with you. And, and I just want you to make sure that everybody knows how they can do so because we want to find the next American Idol. We want to find somebody amazing and, and you might just find them. So what do people have to do? Uh, it, it's so simple. It's so informal to talk to me. All you got to do is DM me. I, I'm the most approachable guy. Just at J Rand official. You can DM me, message me, harass me. Um, I, I'll get back to everybody. Um, and, and I'll even give you notes if, if you send the video and I have some critiques on it. But, um, you know, it, it's my goal to kind of help facilitate some success for these up and coming artists. If you have any last thoughts or anything that you want to tell any aspiring singers out there about what they can expect, if they want to audition. I mean, I, I mean, my 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 uh, my final thoughts to any aspiring singer that wants to be on the show is that, you know, sometimes it takes a couple seasons to get on the show. I, I know some might be discouraged, like they got no's the previous seasons feel free to kind of hit me up and say like, Hey, I auditioned. This is what I did. Um, and sometimes I have some good insight of like what maybe went wrong. Like um, I, I think auditioning via zoom is a little um, difficult because you don't have that live setting. It's kind of a, an adjustment to how can I through this computer show these producers that I can make good television mm -hmm. and you know, it can be, it can be overwhelming. I will say my biggest uh, advice to everybody auditioning via zoom even if you come out to Idol Cross America, which will be announced soon in the next coming months, it's going to be an open call uh, for everybody out there, is that don't fall into the trap of how informal it is to be sitting down. It's always stand up. You got a guitar, put the strap on, give us a show. I don't care if you're in your apartment, your room, your kitchen. Uh, it goes a long way showmanship in these auditions because we're all sitting down at laptops. It's your objective to wake the room up. Wake the room up from the moment you say hello. That goes a long way. That first 30 seconds, hey, what's going on? My name's Josh. I'm so happy to be here. It goes a long way. You want everyone to pay attention. So uh, make everybody pay attention and care to you and your Zoom auditions. Yeah, I do, I do want to mention, I, I was talking to Audrey Pine Wright. She also works with the show. I think you guys know each other. And, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We did an episode together, and uh, she was saying that, you know, you can kind of tell through a Zoom room who's a star. You know, it, it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, if, you, if you've got that quality, you know, you guys are going to be able to see it pretty instantly. Yeah. And also too, like for everyone listening and any, any aspiring singers, like you just got to believe you're a star. Yeah. Every, everybody, everybody is a guy or girl until they're this superstar. They all, Katy Perry was once Katy and yeah. Ryan Seacrest before he's the host was Ryan at one point and Luke yeah. Ryan was just Luke and Lionel was just Lionel. Um, so, you know, you're, they're all deserving to be stars. So um, to all those future superstars, hope to meet you guys soon. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's even worth mentioning that the season 20 winner, Noah Thompson, didn't even know what he was getting himself into because his buddy, Arthur, signed him up. So if you want to be the Arthur in somebody's life, and I said this when I was talking to Audrey, then, uh, you know, tell somebody to talk to Josh, because if, if it's not you, but it's your best friend, it's your brother, it's your sister, whoever it might be, that could be the next American Idol, they've got to follow Josh Randall. And they got to make it happen. Boom. Bennett, man, such a pleasure to talk to you, man. And uh, like I said, um, open invitation once we go live next year. Uh, 
pleasure to meet you in person hopefully one day and get to see a show uh I can't even thank you enough for that. And guys, if you like this podcast, be sure to follow us on Instagram or TikTok at Idle Unaired Podcast. Wherever you're listening, make sure that you subscribe, rate, leave a review, or the old-fashioned way, tell a friend. You can also watch these interviews on YouTube. Just search American Idle Unaired. Thank you guys so much for listening. And Josh, thank you so much for being a part of American Idle Unaired.